What is up, everybody? Welcome back. The Super Bowl is mere days away. And we've got the Kansas City Chiefs playing for a repeat of their win from last year against the San Francisco 49ers who are hoping to challenge that streak. Now, I'm not somebody who was really into football growing up, but for some reason with this Super Bowl season, I've gotten really into it. And what happens when a data scientist gets really into the NFL? You get somebody who's obsessed with making predictions using models about how the Super Bowl is going to go. So I found a data set which has the 58 seasons of Super Bowl history. And for each of those, it has matches of which team played which other team and what the final score was. Now, what we can do is a little bit of feature engineering on each of these games in order to feed those features into a machine learning model and hopefully do our best at predicting what's going to happen for the outcome of any given future game. Now, what we have right now is just the scores of the home team and the away team. But what we really want is some kind of historical data as we go through the season, how well is this team doing, how poorly is this team doing, how much are they dominating their opponent teams by. And so what we're going to do is hand roll a couple of helpful historical features, namely these six. So it's really three features, but one for the home team and one for the away team. The first feature is how many games this team has played so far in the season. So the very first game they play, that feature is going to be equal to zero. But as the season goes on and as they advance through the league, that's going to increase by one every time they play a game. The next one is how many wins they have so far of this season. I expect this one to be a pretty predictive feature because just very simply put, if a team is winning more and more and more of their games, that makes it more likely than they're going to win their next game. And the last season, also what I predict is going to be a helpful one, is the average score differential between that team and the opponents that they've played through the season so far. So for example, if a team has played three games so far and they won by one point, they lost the next one by one point, and they won the third one by three points, then the average is going to be adding those up, which gives us three, and dividing by the number of games. So that's going to be an average score differential of plus one points. And that's what we'll feed in trying to predict what the outcome of their fourth game is going to be. So again, we have six features. We have those three features replicated for the home team and then the away team. And let's go ahead and just feed it into the easiest classification model that we know of, a logistic regression model. And the crazy thing is that this logistic regression model already gives us a plus 10% accuracy from the baseline model. The baseline model being just predicting the probability of winning as the overall probability of winning in the validation set for every single example. And just a quick note, for the training data, we used all the NFL seasons with even-numbered years, and for the validation data, we used all the NFL seasons with odd-numbered years. Now, given this very simple logistic regression model is already giving a pretty sizable gain over the baseline, I think it warrants taking a little bit of a look into what this has actually learned. How has it used each of the features that we fed into it? And one way we can do that is by understanding what an incremental increase in each of our features is going to give us in terms of the incremental increase or decrease in probability of a team winning any given matchup. And what we find is these incremental changes here. So let's take a little bit to analyze this. There's some things that we would definitely expect. Like if a team's number of wins goes up, then that definitely increases the odds pretty sizably that they're going to win their next game. That makes total sense. Conversely, if the team they're playing against, if their wins go up, then that decreases my own team's odds, which again is just the reverse side of that story. Now also for the features of the average score difference, that also goes in the direction that we would expect. The thing that maybe doesn't go in the direction that at least I originally expected is the total number of games that a team has played so far this season when we go and predict the outcome of that next game. I would expect this to go in the same direction as the other two sets of features we talked about, but what we actually find is that the more games a team has played, that's actually going to pretty significantly decrease the odds that they're going to win their next game. Now, I was stemmed about this for a while. It would seem like either the more games you play, the more momentum you have, and the more that's going to increase your odds, or at least it's not going to do anything to your odds. But there's a lot of pretty good reasons, after I thought about this for a second, that this trend would actually be true, and why we're seeing the model learning this trend. One could be injuries or fatigue. Football is a notoriously very rough sport on your body. And the more games you play, the more your athletes are tiring out, getting exhausted, getting injuries. And that could be one reason that the more games you play, the less likely it is you're going to win your next game. 
Another, probably even better reason, is the selection bias of it all. So as the season goes on, you're playing progressively tougher and tougher and tougher teams because the teams who weren't as tough, who weren't as formidable, have dropped out by now, have been kicked out. And so, as you're playing more and more and more games, that next matchup is going to be harder and harder and harder, which it makes sense in that sense for your probability of winning that next game to go down, because your opponents are getting tougher and tougher and tougher. So that was pretty interesting to take a look at with the logistic regression model, which again is giving us a pretty healthy 10% lift in our accuracy of predicting whether or not a team is going to win a game. Getting us look at what it actually learned and what an incremental increase in each of our features is going to give us in terms of the probability of winning. Now, we could just be done here and we can ask this model what it predicts for the Super Bowl this week, but something feels a bit missing here, doesn't it? We're trying to predict the outcome of a team's next game based on the history of their games that season so far. Now, if we frame that more generally, we're trying to use a sequence of things. Here are the games that a team has played, the first game, the second game, the third game, and so on and so on, up to the n-1 game, to predict the outcome of their nth game. Put that way, a sequential model seems like the proper fit here instead of a logistic regression model or a more typical machine learning model. And for that reason, we're going to experiment with using a recurrent neural network model, an RNN model, which is exactly designed to pick up on these sequential relationships in your data. It's going to look at your games of each team, let's say the Kansas City Chiefs, it's going to look at those games in sequence through the season and learn from that sequence and the outcome of each game in that sequence to better predict what the outcome is going to be in the next game, the Super Bowl, let's say. And so that's exactly what we do. We train a recurrent neural network model, and we find that we got an additional plus three increase in accuracy, even on top of the logistic regression model. So our hypothesis is definitely true, that there was something more to be learned from the sequential data that we just couldn't learn by just using a logistic regression or typical machine learning model. Now, here's the part of the video where we actually use our recurrent neural network model the best model we've had so far, to make predictions of what's going to happen in the Super Bowl. So this model, as its input, accepts information about the last five games that the Kansas City Chiefs have played leading up to the Super Bowl. And, drumroll please, we get a 67% chance that the Kansas City Chiefs are going to win this Super Bowl. Now, that's awesome that we got a prediction, but it seems a little high, doesn't it? And so what I found through some tinkering and experimenting with this model is that it really matters what the lag size or the window size you use in your training data is. So this model was trained to say, look at the last five games that a team has played, look at the sequential information in the last five games, and use that to predict what's going to happen in the next game. Now, five is kind of an arbitrary number, right? If we, for example, increase that to 10, we say look over a much longer window of how a team's been doing for the last 10 games in this season and use that to predict the next game, then we actually get only a 60% chance that the Chiefs are going to win the Super Bowl. So either way, it's still biased in terms of the Chiefs winning, but that's a pretty healthy 7% decrease, 7% differential by just using a different lag size. So all that is to say that the lag size here, the nature of how you construct your training data and all the choices there do matter a lot. It's not like that 67% is just the truth or the 60% of the truth. It really matters because if you look at the last five games the Chiefs played, they won every single one of them. Many of them they won by pretty significant margins. But if you zoom back to the last 10 games they played, the story is a bit more nuanced. They won seven of them and they lost three of them, which makes sense for that probability of winning to now go down because the model is now seeing losses in addition to just pure wins there. Now to round out this video, we can actually go one step further with this recurrent neural network. This current RNN was just trying to spit out a probability that the team would win the game. What we would love to have is a prediction of what the score difference is going to be between the two teams. That's going to be a lot more rich, that's going to keep me on the edge of my seat when I watch this game, trying to see if that score differential is actually true. And so the RNN is constructed in pretty much the same way, same features being fed in. The only difference is the label is no longer a binary win or loss label. It's now the difference in scores between the two teams that played in the next game. And so we train that RNN model, and again, drumroll please, we get that this RNN model, using the five games previously to predict the score differential in the next game, gives us a prediction of plus three points in favor of the Kansas City Chiefs.
Again, just want to note that the lag here matters. If we feed in the last 10 games as our training data instead, then that goes down to a plus 1.5. Score differential in favor of the Chiefs. So either way, again, same story we got with the binary model, where the Chiefs are expected to win according to this model, but with a smaller margin. Now we're going to go with the model that takes in five games and spits out the next game because that gave us a better overall accuracy. And so this data scientist prediction of what's going to happen in this week's Super Bowl is that I predict the Kansas City Chiefs are going to beat the San Francisco 49ers by three points. Now this is the part of the video where I admit everything that is wrong with the model and everything that we could have done differently. There's gonna be way too many things to note, but we're missing very key statistics. All we were training these models off of is the final scores in history. But of course, player statistics, for example, are gonna be super important. Even the weather in the stadiums is gonna be super important, all these different things. So if we wanted to really, really do this correctly and really hone in on what we think, we would grab all that data, join it to the data set we have now, and come up with a much more holistic, well-informed prediction. So that's definitely one thing. Another thing is the choice of the model architecture. Who says we have to stop at the recurrent neural network? We can use something more complex like an LSTM or even dip into the world of transformers here. But, you know, just to keep things a little bit simple and also taking a look at the fact that we don't have tons of data because each data point is a game and there's only so many of those, even when you go back to 1966 when all of this started, there's still not tons of data. So trying to balance the complexity of the model with how much training data we actually have, we can stick with the recurrent neural network for now. But all that is to say there's definitely improvements to be made. I will be sitting on the edge of my seat later this week for two reasons. One, because I unexpectedly got really into this game. And two, because now that I've made predictions, I really wanna see them come true. Hopefully you'll be watching too. Let me know what you think about these predictions and the overall video. Thank you so much for sticking around till now. Like and subscribe for more videos just like this one. And I'll see everybody next time.